influence you the wrong way. I've got a lot of friends, y'all, that I'd never leave. And I've had, I, there's a lady came in here one time that was living under a bridge here in town. And I know her real well. And I loved her. Every time she'd come in here, she smelled like aftershave or she smelled like mouthwash. And if she couldn't get alcohol, she had to have something with alcohol in it. And she'd drink aftershave. She'd drink whatever she could get. And I always loved on her and hugged her and made over, and, and I knew her family, and I knew her family would help her. I knew they would help her. And I thought, why is she in the wintertime now living under a bridge, you know? I don't, but I realized when she was drinking, she was a handful of men. And they couldn't handle her. They just couldn't handle her. She was wide open. And I, finally one night she came, and I, I gotta say this quick, but she came up and she gave her life to the Lord, and I'm telling you, she got it. She wailed and cried right there wailed and cried. Everybody in here heard her just crying and wailing and, uh, for like 45 minutes. And when she got up, she staggered to the bathroom. She was drunk in the spirit. And she washed her face, and when she came out, she was glowing. Have you ever seen a glow on somebody's face when they really get it? I can see somebody across the street and tell you if they got it. There's just something about them. People seen me, Mary's sister seen me get in out of a car one day and she goes, oh, gosh, Eddie got straightened out. Look at him. And she's seen it because all that stress is gone and all that crazy is gone. And, oh, man, it feels so good. It's better than chicken. Somebody say amen. <laughs> so when you see that, I tried to help her, and uh, she got free, and she went and got a job, probably the first job she's had in many, many years because she was such an alcoholic she couldn't work. And uh, she was walking to work through town. And I seen her one day in a uniform, Wendy's uniform. And I said, what are you doing? She said, working. I said, get out of here. Where, really? She said, I'm working overtime this weekend, Eddie. I said, I'm so proud of you. I said, get in. And I took her. And she said, when she leaves work, she goes to the laundromat, washes her uniform, puts it in a box, goes back under the bridge. And she walks to work the next day and she would come to church when she could when she wasn't working she'd come in here and pray and she had a boyfriend he didn't get free you know, he, he didn't want to be free and he was a heavy drinker and he'd say hurry up hurry up you know she'd be up here praying he'd be saying come on let's go and I took her to the side and I said baby you have to separate yourself from that. Because I said, he's going to drag you back in the sewer. And, I, and she said, he ain't got nobody. And she said, all we've ever had is each other. And I heard her. I heard her loud and clear. I can't just leave him out there alone, Eddie. I said, well, at least make him not drink around you. Let him, if he's going to drink, make him go somewhere else and drink, you know. So I got with Mike here, and, and uh, Mike and I prayed, and we decided to help Missy get her an apartment. And we got her one, and long story short, uh, she did good for a while, but she'd come in from work, and her old man would be drunk and have people laid out everywhere, and it, she just broke over because you can't stay around that. Sooner or later, it's going to jump. You're going to have a bad day at work, and you're going to come home, and it's going to jump all over you, man. And it did, and uh, both of them are gone now. They stepped off into eternity, both of them. And I just pray, and I pray and I pray that God fixed things, that she fixed things, that he fixed things before they left. I couldn't help them. I wanted to help, and I tried to help. My point is, there's times, y'all, when you get lined out, you got to separate from people. It's not that you don't love them. I know you want to help them, but you got to get you fixed before you can help them. I need you to hear me. You got to get, don't mean you can't talk to them. Don't you dare go around. Don't you hang out. Don't you watch them use. Don't you go with them when they're looking because you know people they don't know and you're going to try to find them one. Don't do all that. You have to get away from it. I'm talking to somebody. 